This is Duke University. I think there's been times in my career when I thought that I should be, try to be like someone. And it was only later that I realized that that's not really the right answer. You can't try to be like someone. You can take your observation of their traits. If they did something to inspire you, you can uh, acknowledge that it worked for you. But at the end of the day, a leader can't be anything other than what he or she is, and that is themselves. And, and generally speaking, when a leader tries to be something other than who they are, it, it doesn't work because people see through it. They put up a facade. They, are, they have characteristics that they really don't believe in or can't pull off. I actually think we understate the importance of humility in leadership. I do. I, I think that... Um, you know, there's this notion that leaders have to be completely in control, charismatic all the time. Um, when in fact, when I look back in my own career, the leaders who I've actually admired the most, and having just said you shouldn't want to be someone else, but you do admire them, are those who exhibited a sense of humility about their position that I found compelling. In fact, compelling to the point where I wanted to do better for them because they did understand the, how, wh what a privilege it was to lead. And, and, and leadership is a privilege, no matter what level or no matter what line of work. When, just the word itself, you know, to, for someone to call you a leader is a honorific that uh, is probably second only to father and grandfather, in my case. Most of the time when I have a phrase that resonates with me, that I, that I really want to get behind because it helps me explain something. Oftentimes, that phrase will come to me at a surprising moment, you know, in the middle of a workout or just before I wake or I'm fully awake. You know, you've probably had that happen to you where you say, wow, I wonder where that came from. Well, it comes from the fact that you're not completely consumed by doing something else and your brain has had time to kind of wander around. So I'm a huge advocate of white space. The way you get people to interact with each other from different cultures, whether it's an, or different genders or different religious beliefs, is by um, getting them to commit to the team, and then and then assuring them that what they do has importance far beyond themselves. If you can't get to that point, if all they do is commit to the team, that's only part of the way there. They have to commit to the team because the team is seeking to achieve something more important than themselves. The work-life balance that my wife Deanie and I have struck is the recognition that there are times in our career when we're not going to have a balance. We're just not. It's not possible. I mean, when you're deployed, I, I was deployed for three out of four years from 2003 to 2007. Um, um, to Iraq. Well, there's no balance in that. You know, the, you just, that's, that's when you, you actually, if, if this were a bank account, you, you're withdrawing the goodwill that you've generated with your family when you're gone for three out of four years. But when you can, and you have to be alert for the possibilities that you can, then you, you contribute to that bank account. And, um, you know, the, the, no one person can answer that question exactly the same as any other person. 